On each claim that Eric got flagged, but Eric argued that he had two seconds on his clock, some good drama. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at some games that were played by various streamers in the Olympiad. Here we go. All right, so what do we have? We have D4 in this game played by Krikort, Mekaterian, and Zia Tashun Tajwar. D5 played, I leaked the game exactly. We got C4. E6 played here now. This is what Krikor is 25-42. Zia Tassin Taj uh Tajwar is um 2307. So let's see. So Krikor plays knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, a6. All pretty standard so far. Some people like Hikaru, in fact, have played a6 here. I played this in um yeah, I played this in uh Gibraltar a few years back. It's it's kind of a little bit shaky, but it is relatively playable. Pawn takes pawn, bishop g5 played here. Now we get bishop to um bishop to e6, e3. Knight bd7 here, bishop to d3, c6, white plays h3, bishop d6, bishop f4. Very nice move by uh, by Krikor, of course. He's trying to trade the bishop, so even though he gets double pawns here, now white can go g4 and f5, put a lot of pressure on the queen side, and it's very, very scary here for, uh, for, for black to deal with. So bishop f4, we get queen c7, bishop takes, queen takes, castles, castles, queen b3 played by Krikor. Not a move that I'm a huge fan of, although on the other hand, it's a little bit hard to get any kind of a minority attack on the queen side. So it goes here, and the idea is to play hmm, a4. We get a5, queen to a3, takes, takes, pawn to h6 is played here, Krikor goes rook b1, idea to play b4, rook b4, maybe rook to b3 as well, and I guess white's maybe a little bit better. Can I explain the reasoning behind a6? There isn't really an actual good reason behind a6. I mean, like, there's no hard set reason why it's played. It's sort of a bit of a waiting move to see what white's going to do. So we get knight to e8 played here by Zia. We got b4, takes, takes, knight d6. Great move. Guards the whole chain with the knight on d6. It guards the pawn on b7. Also stops e4 here, potentially. So this knight on d6 is incredible. So Krikor goes rook a1, rook fc8. And black actually is completely equalized here. Completely equalized. We get rook b2, rook a8, and now white's pawn on a4 is probably a little bit weaker than the pawn on b7 because of the knight on d6. We get knight to e5 played here, pawn to f6. Feels a little bit dubious. Knight takes knight, which I don't like. I assume white should have played knight g6 with the idea of knight f4 and knight e7. And I think white is maybe, maybe a little bit better here. Um, Veritas from just released a video. We actually watched that video about 30 minutes ago, so... Uh, we have covered that already. So what, what do we get here? So we get knight takes d7 instead is played in this position. We get knight d7. Uh, knight d7 is played here. One second, sorry. Um, we get knight d7. Bishop takes d7. G4, rook a7, rook b1, rook a8, f3. And position's very balanced here, actually. Black's pawn on b7 again, very well guarded by the knight. a4, also guarded by the knight. So the real question is, can white get e4 and e5 in? undermine the knight on d6 and potentially break through on the b file we get rook a5 king f2 king f8 king e2 king e7 rook g1 king f8 king d2 rook e8 rook b6 not i mean sort of some maneuvering here and now krikor plays h4 the idea of playing g5 trying to open up this g file here potentially black still should be completely fine here um king d8 is maybe not the move i would have played i would think maybe rook h8 is a move to always prevent g5 because then you can take and go rook h2 but he goes, he goes king d8, rook b1, king c7, rook g2, and now rook e7. Now, this is not a move that I like. Again, I still would prefer to go rook h8 here to try and prevent g5, but he plays rook e7, rook c1, king b8, dodging any tricks on the c file here with this potential pin. g5 is played by Krikor, takes, takes, f5, and now this is sort of where things start to go wrong. I think f5 has to be considered a mistake. One of the things the pawn on g4 was doing here is it actually was preventing this move bishop f5 because if black can put the bishop on f5, if you ever trade, e3 is very weak, as is d4. Additionally, black can also reroute backwards, so like rook e1, knight d6, knight c4, and you have problems on the c4 square. Whereas after f5, now the bishop is very, very passive here on d7. There isn't a whole lot going on. Precore goes rook h2, taking the h file. Now we get rook e8, rook h7, rook g8, rook to h1. King c7, rook h8, rook a8, takes, takes, knight e2. Now the problem is with the pawn on f5. Also, there's a square on e5, so if the knight can jump to e5, white should be quite a bit better here. Bishop e8, knight f4, king d7. And now Krikor starts playing on the other side of the board with a5, idea to go king c3, b4, c5, b6, and a6 eventually. And black is just very passive here, very weak pawn on f5. Bishop is doing nothing on the diagonal here. And your rook on g8 is super passive as well. No open files. 
So we get king e7, king c3, bishop d7, knight g6, king d8, now rook h7. Again, you're always going to be able to put the pony on e5 here. And after knight e5, white should be technically winning here. Again, weak pawn on f5, weak pawn on g7. White can also play on the queen side a little bit. So it should technically be winning. Bishop d7, king b4, bishop e8, king c5, king c7, bishop c2, bishop d7, bishop b1, bishop e8, and now sooner or later we're gonna get something i guess here he goes knight g6 finally with the idea of trying to play knight e7 and remove the rook from g8 say bishop e8 knight e7 for example rook can't go to h8 and if you go rook f8 rook g7 boy it's just completely winning so he goes knight f7 and now after f4 you can't actually i don't think you can stop knight e7 here this is the problem if you go like king d8 i think i go king b6 which actually is the game sorry so king d8 king b6 knight d6 knight e5 back and i mean white has the dream here incredible pony here great bastion on e5 and pawns are connected weakness is everywhere you can play a6 problems on the seventh rank all the trumps are in white's favor knight c8 king b7 and krikor wins this game i don't know which round this was but this was the first game that my mod suggested um this was against zia tasin tajra from i believe that is bangladesh if i'm not mistaken um and i'm not sure of the round but very very nice very technical uh game by krikor against a slightly lower rated opponent very well done here is the next one this is going to load. Okay, so here's the next game that we have to take a look at. This is the game between uh, Zazoka Gail and Tanya Sachdev, another another sometime streamer from um, from India, of course. Take a look at the game. So the game starts with d4, knight f6, c g3, d5, bishop g2, e6, knight to f3, b5 interesting move by Tanya idea is basically to prevent c4 you can also fion keto your own bishop along the diagonal and later you can even go c5 so say white castles and you get a position like this without c4 being playable here the bishop on g2 is never really gonna have a lot of scope because because the pawn on b5 will always capture so if you do this you'd love to get a position like this for example where you open up the diagonal but black can just win a pawn so if you're not able to play c4 you can't really force this diagonal open and put a lot of pressure so here after b5 castles bishop b7 is played a4 played by white b4 of course you do not want to take because then white can go c4 and try to put pressure on the center of the board and open up the long diagonal for the bishop on g2 we get b4 a5 played here bishop e7 c3 takes takes castles and now white finally is able to play c4 but the b pawns are off the board so it's a little bit different black takes back with the d pawn queen c2 and c5 here and now this is actually quite similar to some catalans you have but the big difference is without any b pawns here there really are no weaknesses and the pawn in a5 potentially is a weakness so like if we go back to the start of the game just to illustrate a point say you got like some kind of traditional catalan um let's say castle c4 takes queen c2 b6 for example you can get a lot of catalans that are kind of like this but with all the pawns on the board uh generally there's a lot of play and it's pretty balanced but with, without these b pawns black really doesn't have any weaknesses as we'll see in the game because after takes takes bishop b2 knight bd7 black just goes rook c8 or rook b8 and this a pawn is weak and black's gonna have an open c file and potentially an open d file and black should clearly be better so we get queen takes c4 rook to b8 played making use of this file trying to create a good old-fashioned fossil say white plays a random move like knight e1 you can go bishop takes g2 Knight takes g2 and then rook takes b2 winning the bishop so i like rook b8 we get queen c1 to guard the bishop preventing the fossil queen to e7 knight to c3 now rook fc8 and exactly what i said because the b file is open it's quite a bit different here black is a great rook on c8 great rook on b8 a lot of pressure here potentially on various diagonals as well and this is the difference between a regular catalan and this this sort of attempt by white to trade back into a catalan but not realizing the big difference after playing c4 b c b c rook a4 is played here bishop c6 rook to h4 you get knight to f8 very nice move by tanya i really like this move just rotating the pony to g6 to get rid of this rook which could become a little bit pesky here if white could line up something on the diagonal queen a1 knight g6 is played rook h3 and now this rook on h3 is just doing nothing it's just aiming at a pawn but there's not even any attack so rook is just out to lunch here and just terrible for lack of a better word so now e5 is played here by tanya we get knight to a2 attempting to now now open up to this long diagonal perhaps you can create some kind of threat with the battery but this has to be really bad bishop d7 nice move by tanya the rook is trapped on h3 no squares you go to h4 i eat the rook you go to h5 i eat it for free 
And so white ends up losing the rook. So knight takes e5 is played. We got bishop takes h3. Bishop takes h3. Rook to c7 is played. Now white goes knight c1 here. Knight takes e5. Bishop takes e5. Bishop d6. And white has a bishop and a pawn for the rook. But again, with these two open files and the rooks on them, black should really just be winning quite smoothly here. So we get bishop d4, rook b5, e3, trying to protect the wooden shield in the middle of the board here. And now I assume, yeah, bishop e5 is played, getting rid of the one active piece. And now there's no longer going to be a shield. Knight to e2, takes, takes, rook to c5, stacking, doing the double stack on the c file, rook to d1, g6, another very good move. Stops knife to f5 here, creates lift for the king, and black now just has a great position. a6. Queen e5, rook b1, queen e4, rook b1, king g7, knight b3, rook b5, knight d4, rook c5, knight b3, rook c3, knight d4, rook d3. Now, I do have to say it feels like um, this has been a little bit misplayed by Tanya. I mean, black is still quite a bit better, but it's not it's not winning on the spot the way it should have been. So clearly something has gone wrong, but I assume she goes on to convert this anyway. Rook e1, queen e7, bishop f5. Rook a3, queen b2, and now rook takes a6. And now even though this knight's bishop here with an outside pawn to push up the board, this is just game over. g4, rook b6, queen a1. Now we get king to g8. Um, I find it absolutely wonderful that even after two years of no XVC collab, you still retain the very precise and professionalism, professional terms like wooden shield and fossils. Oh, no worries, of course. That is chess now. Rook d6 is played here by Tanya. Rook e1, takes, takes, queen d7. Rook b1, rook c8, stopping this idea with rook b8 and maybe a checkmate here. Knight h6 is played, king f8, g5, knight g8, queen h8, and I assume rook d1, nice move, king g2, queen d5, check, b4, and now just queen takes g5, king f3, rook takes b1, and now Tanya wins the game, so the queen is guarding the knight, so white has nothing to do here, and black has two extra rooks. Pretty clean game, very good win for Tanya. I think overall she's doing very, very well in the Olympiad with uh, four and a half points out of five. So very, very good result for her. Let's take a look now. This game was played today. This was a game between um, this was a game between Anish Gear and Eric Hansen from the fifth round. It's the fifth round, right, of the Olympiad today. Now I haven't looked at this game, but I do know there was the big matchup between um, the Netherlands and Canada. So we get D4. Eric plays D5. We get C4. We get D6. Knight f3, knight f6. Anish plays g3, playing the Catalan defense. Bishop b4, bishop d2, bishop e7, all pretty standard. Bishop g2, castles, castles. He takes c4, played here by Eric. Now, it's worth noting that Anish earlier in the event, I think he played c6 against um, Niels Grandelius in the uh, match with Netherlands and, uh, and Sweden, if I'm not mistaken, with the black piece. So he's played a lot of Catalans with both white and black dc4 played by eric queen a4 bishop d7 takes bishop c6 um now this is a little bit surprising from eric because normally against both queen a4 and queen c2 black plays this move a6 followed by b5 and then bishop b7 this is one of the very very old lines um oh the wait actually no wait sorry i'm wrong no actually you can't do this because in this position the bishop's already on d2 so it's different i was thinking of the the normal main line which is which is this this castles castles takes queen a4 and then then this is the main line but in this position the bishop's already on d2 so if we go back to this position um right here white's actually just up a tempo with the bishop on d2 because you played bishop b4 and then you went back so you lost time by playing bishop b4 and bishop e7 so you get bishop d7 queen c4 bishop c6 rook c1 played here knight d7 knight c3 a6 bishop f4 played by anish Rook c8. All looks pretty normal here. Nothing crazy. Eric never knows any theory. No, Eric's been studying. He's been studying quite a bit. Although white does seem a little bit better. Not, nothing like too crazy, but this feels like a classic Catalan where, white, where white's doing well. On each claim that Eric got flagged, but Eric argued that he had two seconds on his clock. Some good drama. Oh, really? Okay, well, we'll get to that later. So knight d5 is played. We got b4 here. Knight to b6. Queen d3. Knight takes c3. Rook takes c3. Now we get knight d5. Black tries to put the knight in the center. The problem is you have this permanent weakness on c7, and white's going to go knight e5 and try to open up the diagonal. So we get rook takes c6. Interesting move by Anish here. Um, now, I guess Anish treats this kind of like a Sicilian. There are a lot of various uh, knight orbs, dragons, etc., where you have a classic sacrifice on c3. So here in this pawn structure, he does the same kind of thing where black now has these double pawns on c7 and c6. So you get rook c1 here. 
Eric plays Bishop d6, e3 played by Anish, and white is just clearly better simply because the center is very closed and white's very, very solid. Black has no pawn breaks here um, at all in this position, and also you have weak pawns on c6 and a6, even maybe some long-term weaknesses on the king side as well. So we get h6 played here, queen takes a6 is played, rook a8, queen d3 played here, then we get g5, pawn takes, pawn takes, h3 played by Anish I guess the idea is quite simply you want to stop g4 so if you go like rook c6 g4 for example knight d2 maybe there's queen h4 knight f1 f5 something like this feels like white's better here but maybe black has some play so Anish in, in typical uh typical Anish fashion tries to be a little bit too over cautious with this h3 move um and now f5 rook takes c6 get queen f6 here and the pro big problem I think with h3 here is that now black is threatening g4 like if you just play a waiting move like rook c3 g4 now if you take on take on g4 you have big problems on the f file and additionally if you move your knight after takes takes like queen h4 suddenly the g file is going to be open as well for black to use so h3 is a little bit little bit questionable by Anish for sure um I assume the correct move for the engine let me go back was let's see yeah actually engine likes what I said rook c6 g4 knight d2 and just knight f1 and it says white's uh maybe not actually wait now the bar is going down maybe not maybe not um but anyway so we get this position uh after queen f6 knight d2 g4 played by eric here takes takes knight e4 queen f5 computer apparently likes queen h4 but i i mean queen f5 seems fine to me rook c2 now rook a7 played by eric idea to stack the towers and play against this weak a3 and weak b4 pawn we get um rook d2 here bishop e7 is played now knight g3 queen g5 actually why didn't he trade I mean white is still quite a bit better here because with the bishop on g2 you can't stack but black also really doesn't have many weaknesses here and you can even go like bishop h4 and I don't know like king f7 king e7 I'd still rather be white in the position but I think black has pretty decent chance to hold because the pawns can't really advance you have to always keep an eye on the a3 pawn and computer actually only says 0.7 here so I'm actually a little bit disappointed in Eric that he plays queen g5 mind you maybe it was low on time who knows what the situation was but in this position with such an open king these weaknesses on e6 and g4 with a lot of pieces on the board and your open king it's eh. so it's a tough move now again he might have been low on time here so you can't be super critical but uh he, he should have traded queen so we get queen g5 queen b3 targeting the pawn on e6 and the diagonal as well king h8 we get pawn to d5 played here by Anish rook to d8 played by Eric apparently I mean a computer likes e5 I think already it's kind of gone though he goes rook d8 rook d3 pawn takes bishop takes queen to e5 played here now I get queen c4 guarding the bishop but also threatening to take on g4 bishop h4 played by Eric I think this is actually a really good move e oh no he goes knight e2 here which apparently is a mistake computer says e4 is best but he goes knight e2 and now the computer says that after queen f6 knight f4 g3 apparently black is completely equal here so this is actually a huge miss by Eric again who knows what the time situation was honestly at this point so you can't be critical but clearly as we're seeing Anish here was not precise at all so he goes knight e2 bishop g5 played by Eric king g2 rook d6 trying to do a rook lift here and now we get knight to f4 bishop takes and now after pawn takes Eric plays queen f6 and resigns the game apparently um now you have to be very careful because if you move the queen anywhere except f6 or g7 there is the pyramid with queen d4 and white is uh gonna win the rook on a7 oh he lost oh he flagged here when he, he played queen f6 and flagged ah oh it says zero 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 I wasn't even looking um oh that's unfortunate mind you he's, he's definitely much worse if not losing here but that is a bit of a heartbreak for sure to to lose a game on time like this